YouTube, how are we doing? Pass the prop back here again today. It is all, all MLB for you guys today. We got a ton of games on the slate. We already got a game kicked off already at like 10 a.m. So, you know, we're ready to roll. Join as always. Bye, right, guys. Stu, how you doing, man? Yeah, that caught me off guard, man. The 11 o'clock game is what? That's like a 4th of July special. You know, I don't know. I don't know what was the deal with that right there. But, hey, early baseball is something I'll never complain about. So, besides that, it was a great weekend, man. A lot of good sports stuff. UFC 300 was obviously amazing. You know, that was a blast. I think you obviously cashed some crazy tickets. Just a fun event as well. I think the only thing would have made it better is a little more interesting Masters, right? I feel like Scotty walked away just like everyone thought he would. So that was that was a little boring. But besides that, it was a great sports weekend. Final regular season games of the season in the NBA. It's playoff time now. So a lot of good sports stuff. Definitely excited to be back on Pass the Prop. Yes, sir. Uh, shout out my boy Ludwig, as always. The homie comes through again, dude. The guy's a fucking machine, dude. Uh, shout out Holloway as well, man. That that uh, last second KO. Uh, I, I know a lot of people were on it. I, I was a good spot, man. I feel like it, it was. If it was gonna get a finish, that's how we're gonna do it. And uh, crazy fight. And uh, only thing I wish is it didn't go so fucking late. My God, dude. I can't imagine for you, Stu. Put you up at one thirty in the morning. <laughs> Hey, I was fired fired up. Up, and at like 12 45 i can't imagine you guys yeah yeah that's yeah that's always the tough part obviously if stuff starts closing down you know or like last call or whatever get out of here but hey i it was a blast i was fired up you know i didn't even care and i had no clue what time it was so when you got a, a card that entertaining you know I, I wasn't really i wasn't too worried about it but uh Definitely. I mean, I'm sure it made a lot of people like me, you know, want to watch more UFC, you know, guys that tune in just for the big fights and stuff. So that was a, that was a, a dope card. Definitely excited to to keep tuning in. Yeah, I keep tuning in, but there won't be another one like that for <laughs> a long, long time. And that was that was absolutely loaded. Um, but yeah, it's been good. Obviously, we're, we're heading back into the MLB streets. Um, let's do a quick recap. We got about 12 of you guys in here the first couple minutes. Appreciate you popping in early. If you have questions, drop them in the chat. We've already gone through most of these already. Um, we'll talk your NBA spots first here. Um, the last ones of the regular season. Uh, and and they end up going weird on us on there. Yeah, Claxton, he went super crazy to start and then kind of slowed down in the second half. He had a little hope for a minute, but unfortunately he kind of he kind of smoked this one for us right here. And then the the brutal one. This one, this one hurt a little. This one, this one ruined my night right here, man. Oh my god, eight eight shot attempts, what four threes, and he missed back to back free throws that left us on five. He missed both of them, so he obviously just needed one or two right there. Yeah, that was. I mean, you know, you know, I don't I don't complain very much. That was one of the the harder watches of the year for sure. Just come on, back to back free throws. I mean, you're already shooting twenty percent from the field. You can't like make one of them like, uh, that was, that was a real mood killer right there, but he's, you know, 18, 19 years old. So it, it is what it is. That's what you get for betting on the young guys sometimes. Yeah. And at least, uh, at least yours had some life. Like this one died in like the first. So, um, <laughs> so my boy Bailey Faulkner and then I'm coming through for my strikeout props and stuff like that. But Gausman, man, just got absolutely lit up by the Rockies away from Coors. Obviously not a good look. Um, that one flew over the line. Um, and then shout out to the Braves, man. Shout out my boy Marcelo Zuna. Cash me like three bets on one swing. Uh, I had one RBI, two RBI, and this. Um, and it, it kind of went the way we expected, right? I talked about first five being a little weird. Um, because we don't you never know with these younger pitchers. Uh, and the bullpen imploded, right? And we ended up getting to the right spot. Uh, two outs in the seventh inning. Uh, made us sweat a little bit, but shout out to the Braves as always being absolute wagons. Um, kind of coming through here and uh, putting on a pretty big show in the end of that game too. So um, cash the seven would have been under on the five would have been under on the full game, but they cashed the first seven. So felt good about that one coming through. Yeah, no, I mean, a hundred percent when you kind of get a little creative and it works out, right. You know, you're rewarded for it. That that's always a good feeling right there. I was hyped, obviously went a little more down to the wire, but with the Braves, it's one of those teams. You never feel out of it, right. You never feel out of a bet. Like if it's the nationals and you got nothing sure, you know, but this is the Braves we're talking about. So that was definitely a good little, you know, night saving cash at the end right there. Yeah, I think that might be done on your boy, Jordan, though. Uh, Ozuna comes through with three and a nuke. Um, 
I bet on Kyle Tucker more than probably anyone does. And this is the one time I went away from Kyle Tucker and took out Jordan. And uh, Tucker would have got – Tucker had three of them and a homer in that game. And yep. Jordan did absolutely zilch. So, um, dude smoking the ball too, which which is annoying because it was the one game I picked there. But you Ozuna goes through, goes crazy, and uh, Kyle Tucker goes crazy. But I, I picked the wrong lefty in the middle of that lineup. Yeah, yeah, it's how it goes with a team like that sometimes. But like I said on the show, this was a real nice price, you know, and I'm glad I got a little down on the, the Ozuna RBIs as well. That was still a good call right here. But, yeah, it's always tough picking between, you know, two MVP candidates like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's um, move on to – because I don't think Poole played, right, for years? No, he didn't play. He didn't play. He was sick. He took his – day off for the rest of the year although the backup jared butler did get a double double so we were on the we were on the right page right there but yes sir so it ends up going minus like 0.7 for me um with the with the long shot missing and uh us getting juiced out a little bit so <clears throat> he's sitting at 8.15 obviously one and one on the show um counting there Stu, what what uh we, we got about 15 of the people in here um, let's start talking this slate. Uh, what what game is sticking out to you in your eyes here? Like I said, as always, does not have to be the best game. Doesn't have to be the one you have the most bets in. But which one caught your eye right away? Yeah, that's a that's a good one right there. Obviously, I do want to see my nat my Nationals guy make his debut. You know, that's a I'm a fan. So at the end of the day, I will be watching that one. I think Lorenzen will be interesting coming back. I'm very curious what they've got going up there i think honestly the the what do you call it the spread in that game is weird to me when i looked at it um it's what like minus 120 so i'm, I'm very curious to see what goes on in that game you ever see something you're just kind of a little taken aback by i don't know I was, I was a little thrown off by the 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 money line and spread in that game so that that'll be one that probably gets my attention before i watch the dodgers crush the nationals yeah that game is interesting it's just Detroit has been playing okay, and they're at home. Uh, it's a huge like disadvantage there um, for Texas, going from a pretty hitter friendly park yeah. to um, a very pitcher friendly park. Lorenzen, obviously, you, you don't know how far he's going to go. I'm uh well. First off, I'll go with an early game. I'm curious if Aaron Nola is just washed, um, and if he's just going to get absolutely lit up today. Um, I don't. I have not been impressed with anything he's done so far. Like he's been getting hit hard. Ball's been up in the zone. His sinker's been getting smoked. Um, obviously, we have Fade Quantrill on the mound on the other side. So, um, kind of interested by that eight and a half. Like, why does it keep going down? Because I'm looking at Philly. It's looking pretty nice out there weather wise. So, um, that's obviously one. And then I'm ready to see these Astros get on track, man. Astros Braves two Garbo arms. And uh, let's get this going, baby. Ten and a half total there. I should. I think it should be fourteen, bro. Uh, this if if Darius Vines does not get down in the zone, he's given up three bombs. If uh, Aaron Getty uh, finds a way to, you know, maybe throw strikes this time, maybe this game is not a hand early. But uh, that's definitely number one on the priority list. Two Garbo arms. You got a spread minus one twelve. Minus 104 on those sides. So they know it's going to be close, and they know both arms suck, and they know both offenses are elite. So uh, let's see this thing. I think it'll be some fireworks. 100%. Yeah, I felt like that was the obvious choice. You know, you always want to, like, slide away. And then, honestly, I have no clue who those pitchers really are, too. Like, when you look at it, two teams like that, you know. So I'm sure it's going to be some, you know, home run derby kind of environment, a lot of offense tonight, which obviously will be fun for sure. Yeah, and I, I see the weather starting to heat up a little bit around places here. I know here um, in Wisconsin right now it's 70 degrees today. Obviously, that looks good for all the Chicago spots as well. So um, just a heads up, if you're if you're back in unders, um, it is going to heat up a little bit here uh, in the Midwest. So mm -hmm. just something to keep your eyes on. Yeah, and I want to say, too, I, I know you mentioned Nola about being washed as well. I did see an interesting thing after last game. Um, from Kamish Film Room on Twitter, who's a very good follow. And he was talking, He it was a quote from after the game, and it was pretty much talking about how Nola before last game, I don't know if you saw it, he said he was way off, he couldn't get anything going. 
in the warmups. It was just like he wasn't feeling it at all. So his spin rates in Velo were super down last game. And in the interview after, he said he had to dial everything back. He had to talk with Rio Muto, and he was just trying to survive and get through that game, you know. So an interesting tidbit to see, like all the, the advanced stats show, you know, probably one of his worst outings ever. But there at least was – some explanation from behind the scenes. So I agree that that'll be interesting to see of like, can we get that velo back now? Are we going to get back on track or is this going to be a, a, a consistent problem for the rest of the year? Yeah. I, I, I that's the thing is I have no idea, man. I, you never know what those pitchers too. And you never know if it's like actually the case or if they're just like, all right, we're trying to figure stuff out early on in the season. Cause we've seen a lot of these high end arms uh, kind of suck. So um George Kirby on the slate, obviously one of those guys. Kevin Gausman, um, a lot of these big name guys um, really struggling early on out of the gate. So, um, Stu, you ready to get into it? I am. Yeah, I see. We got a question too. If you if you have any thoughts on that, right there on Solaire and his first game back in Miami, I can just tell you I don't want to play any home runs in Miami, no matter who it is. But I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Absolutely zero. Absolutely zero. I have absolutely no reason to want to bet that game. Um, Cabrera is a high walk guy. You know, it's like, don't want to mess around with that. If you're going to take anything, maybe take a bomb. I mean, if you want to take that, there's no reason to bet, you know, just a hit or anything with Solaire. It's either bomb or bust for me. Yeah, I almost automatically assumed the question was about a home run. That's actually hilarious. I had to reread it and see that he didn't ask about a home run. But I, I agree with you, yeah. But even a home run in that ballpark, man, is not fun, especially Cabrera is fucking nasty as well. So that's probably a, maybe a game two or a game three kind of sprinkle for me. But I don't know about this one right here. And maybe you take uh, three strikeouts and then take an all home run, you know, because yeah. he could do both, honestly, one for five with three three Ks, four Ks would not surprise me, so. Um, yeah, should be an interesting one. I, I didn't even really think about that. Uh, Solaire is not the first guy that pops in my mind for a revenge spot, but, uh, yeah, not, not, uh, you're, you're thinking outside the box, which hopefully that means making some money. So, um, Stu, I will kick it over to you. We'll start with your happiness spot. It looks like the earlier game. Sounds good. We're going Patrick Sandoval under 16 and a half outs right here. I mean, this one is, is pretty simple. You know, I think you look at it, you go a guy like Sandoval, who's had some career um, location problems the whole time. We saw three walks in the last game against the Rays where he was unable to go over this number. His walks currently sit at two and a half as well at plus money, which I do think is another interesting look. Obviously, it when you look at his history against right-handed batters, not super great. The Rays are going to load it absolutely up, just like they did the other game. It's a pretty strong lineup, obviously, but it's also a pretty disciplined lineup. And that's what you want against a guy that can pitch himself out of games, right? Which is something Sandoval has kind of shown the ability to do. In addition to, you know, the power, you know, that can that can shine through at times as well when he gives up those bombs. But I just don't see the longevity in this one, right? He's under against the Rays so far this year. He's under in three straight against the Rays dating back to last year. When you look at road outings, he's under in 14 of his last out team. This just isn't a guy that's getting super deep into games in general, right? It's a control problem. And I think the Rays lineup is not necessarily the spot to now go over this number for like the first time this year. You know, I just think this line's a little too high. And I think a lot of times in the past, maybe oh, that's a trap line, something like that. I think it's I think it's just not an adjustment to what we've seen so far this year. And I think maybe this might be our last chance to take advantage of it. 16 and a half, obviously kind of a key number right here. Every out matters so much. Um, so I just want to take advantage of that line while it's still here. I, I don't see him getting to six in a tough matchup against the Rays. So took this it's minus 120 is the best around right now. It should be over on Bet MGM. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's obviously a, a, a good look um, here because I, I like to fade Sandoval. I also like to bet his strikeouts because that, this guy is – he reminds me a lot of like a – he's a better version of like Andrew Heaney. So like Andrew Heaney's a guy that I will take ladders with, but I also take his outs under and also give up his home run – or earned runs because the dude gives up bombs and gives up a lot of power. So um, definitely a good look, uh, a team that you want to definitely – um, back in the Rays as well, who, you know, uh, got a ton of righties. Um, hopefully they just sit Brandon Lau because watching Brandon Lau hit against lefties is not not fun. But Randy Rosarena, Yandy at the top, um, really not a team I want to um, really want to 
spade, right? That's just a team that's really disciplined. And uh, I know you talked about it already, but definitely a spot there. Um, I like, I definitely will be in there with you. Um, and I will go to a guy I did not expect I was going to bet on today. And that's going to be Frankie Montas. I'm taking Frankie Montas five strikeouts with the Harris um, of the Atlanta Braves. I'm going to be taking him to record a hit. Um, first off, I'll just talk Michael Harris because uh, I don't know if people will notice this, but this dude has been absolutely on a heater, dude. Um, he's got a hit, and obviously we're going in April. We'll go in April. He's only batting 273, right? But the the tough part is, is he's got a hit in every single game but one and has been on base in every single game this year but one. Um, so that's 16, 15 of 16 games he's been on base. Uh, Michael Harris has been really reliable, especially in that sp- – in that six hole, right? He's, he's in that right in that nice spot right behind Marcelo Zuna, who we've already talked about multiple times on the show. This dude's on a heater. Marcelo Zuna's on an absolute heater right now. So you can't really uh, walk him because you got Harris behind. Harris obviously had a little bit more power towards the beginning of the year, but now you have a spot here um, in Aaron Getty, who um, the only thing I'm worried about is him just getting just walking him. He's, he's got like a 16% walk rate, which is terrible. But um, yeah, the walking portion of it, Probably comes against Riley. Probably comes against Olsen. Both guys walk a ton. You can't really walk Michael Harris because he'll actually seal bases, right? He has the ability to swipe bases. Um, an elite bottom of the order with Arcia, Kelnick down there, and Travis Darno. Uh, th- this whole lineup is so deadly. It makes it tough. Houston has a very, very good high-end bullpen, like the, the high-leverage guys. But that middle of the bullpen has just been taxed because they're – Starters have been dog shit. They've been terrible since Framber went down. Hunter Brown um, obviously got a lot of the flack with that really short outing there. Um, they're, th- they're having to throw a lot of these young dudes out there without Framber, and uh, you're starting to see it uh, start to wear a little bit. Um, also with no Verlander there is really, really tough right now as well. So you're seeing these arms that are, are not big league ready yet. They're, they're, Aaron Getty's not even a top five prospect in their organization, um, which is which is tough. Um, so I want to fade him. Um, I think Harris is a great price, um, for this spot and, you know, a lot less of the outside of yesterday, right? I was, he had a three strikeout day yesterday, um, in that one, but really tough to K, right? He, he only had eight strikeouts in his previous 11 games. Um, if you want to go all the way through, it's like 11 and 14 games. So he's tough to K. Um, I think this is a good spot for him, uh, against this. I don't even can we'll call him a can. Um, but then you go over to Frankie Montas. Um, not usually a guy I like to back in terms of strikeouts. He's not really a, a swing and miss dude. Um, but Seattle matchup as always, you guys know, I love to go there. Um, they are third in the MLB in strikeouts per nine, only behind Minnesota or only ahead of Minnesota and Oakland. Um, really tough spot. Um, for this Mariners team to face off against Montas because he's a heavy four seam guy, a heavy splitter guy. Splitters are really tough um, to pick up, especially in this ballpark. I feel like they're going to be trying to lift the baseball. You're not really able to lift the ball off of Frankie Montas. He's very good at getting ground balls um, and also hit this number in one game this year. I know that's not great, but the two games that he missed it were against my Brewers who are deciding they're really good at baseball now in offense, um, which was not, was not what I expected when I walked into the season was the Brewers to be an elite offense, but they're on one right now. So um, I'll give him some flack there, but also your nationals, a team that don't strike out a ton, um, but he hit it against Philly. Um, absolutely smoked those dudes. Um, and I think this is a type of game where we can start to see Frankie Montas get back to his old ways. Velo is up about a half a mile an hour here. Um, he's out of the craziness of New York. You're getting a spot here in Cincy where they're a good young team. And he's almost coming in as the uh, veteran presence. You saw Lodolo have a huge outing. Went crazy. Graham Ashcraft threw well yesterday, got an 8K outing. I think Montas takes over here as uh, their de facto number one until Adolo really gets um, back his feet underneath him. So I think both these dudes have a have a great day. Um, really like Montas today as a, as a spot for me to be contrarian DFS as well. Yeah, I like this a lot. I mean, it's kind of – I feel like what we always do in here, right? You pick your spots, you find the teams you want to target, and then when there are names that, you know, the market isn't as high on, you know, you take advantage of it, right? A guy like Montaz, I'm sure, is not someone the Twitter streets are begging to bet on today, right? It's just one of those things that – We've had a lot of success targeting that Mariners team, and I think Montas should be in a good position to keep it going. So definitely like this parlay right here. 
yeah, swing and strike rate isn't great so far this year. But, yeah, your Nationals pesky. That's why I'm really, like, I'm really interested tonight to see how they do against Glass now, who's obviously the elite of the elite, probably the number one pitcher in baseball at the moment in terms of strikeouts um, without Strider in there. And, dude, is so good, like, so good. I'm curious to see if this if this pesky national team can put the ball in play. Um, maybe like a I'm I mean if they can't, maybe it's an alt over. You can do an alt under as well because we've seen them go against some pretty good pitchers. And uh, yes, they have great outings, seven innings, two runs or whatever. But they only have like four or five Ks, right? So I mean, this could this is a very fun game for um, if you're a prop betting guy because it's like it could go very very much both different ways, right? Yeah, I think the the biggest difference from last year is now Joey Gallo is in there. I believe he K'd four times yesterday by himself. You know, I think his K's is two and a half today as well. So that's always like a a, a new free square that wasn't there last year, essentially, you know. So that is definitely um, the concern. But I agree, a lot of interesting prop stuff in that one. I have a, I have a couple under like parlay pieces so far. I have Manessis under one and a half hits, runs, RBIs, but it's like minus 190, you know, so you got to parlay that up. With something else but i agree definitely uh hopefully it's not too depressing for me and my nationals but should be a good one yes sir yes sir and uh we spoke about that game already oh yeah puck got scratched this morning at like 8 a.m so yeah. um just a heads up there i'm not sure if he's gonna pitch this um the series but talking about that game dodgers taking on your nationals i see you have a bet in that one so let's get over there Sounds good. We're going Teoscar Hernandez over one and a half hits, runs, RBIs, minus 120. As soon as I saw this, had to click on it, get that bet in as soon as possible. Because obviously, it's going to be a rough game for Washington, like you already mentioned, facing one of the best pitchers in baseball, facing one of the best teams in baseball. And now you're calling up a rookie, and you were just mentioning rookies that are not ready to go. This this seems like a, a pretty clear case of that, right? Josiah getting injured, a couple pitchers getting injured earlier in the season has kind of forced their hand. And they got Rutledge down in the minors. He's their top most ready prospect. But guess what? When you have a top most ready prospect that's been battling injury for a while, it isn't quite ready. You don't throw them to the Wolves and you don't give them to the Dodgers. So they said, we're going to wait a little bit and we're going to call this guy up. And that's that's very scary to me as a Nationals fan. Obviously a lefty, um, we don't know too much about him so far besides he had some solid K numbers in AAA last season. Um, but he, once again, he was like a fifth round pick, kind of came out of nowhere. Like this is not a high end prospect that everyone's been waiting for. This is a, okay, I guess we'll see how that goes kind of game, right? And when you look at it and when you look at how scary this Dodgers lineup, I know like Mookie and Otani and, you know, the bigger names will probably come to your head first, but all those numbers are at two and a half right now, right? Teoscar a little bit farther back in the lineup, but this hits runs RBIs. We want the RBI opportunities and who better than to have the best players in baseball hitting in front of you. And man, I was looking at it. I saw some insane stats with Teoscar so far, beside the fact that he's just like good against lefties, right? So far, 330, you know, 720 slugging and limited sample. But that backs up his career, good power numbers against lefties. So far this year, guys, over 50% of his plate appearances have come with runners on base. Over a third of his plate appearances have come with a runner in scoring position so far, right? 75 plate appearances, 39 of those, there was a runner on base. 26 of those, there was someone in scoring position, right? I mean, this is like the mecca of hits runs rbis like this is the like the team right this is i mean will smith like freddie right so many guys around him mookie otani like this is the best lineup there is and obviously it, it's concerning like walks and stuff like that but the way i look at it like you got to make it through those guys first. And if there's someone more likely to get walked, I feel like it's like a Freddie Friedman of the world, right? That lefty on lefty brutal matchup, you know, Otani, same with that. A, a guy making his first ever start. It feels like those are going to be the guys that are walked on base. Well, a guy like Teoscar is going to be the guy that you need to throw that challenge fastball against because you can't walk him, right? You can't just keep walking these guys. So I think he might actually be the beneficiary of that. So a little bit of unknown with a young pitcher on the national side, but to be honest, it just feels like this should be a two and a half number. I mean, the rest of the, the, you know, heart of the order is, I think uh, we're getting a little bit of disrespect on my guy, Tay Oscar. So I definitely think this is a great look minus 120 over on MGM ESPN. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I know I, I heard a stat too about last year was Will Smith was number one, I think in MLB in, um, AB is with a runner on base. It was like 63% or 61%. 
and Muncie was number two, uh, number one, right? I think it was one Muncie, two was Will Smith, and obviously Teoscar moving in behind those guys uh, makes it pretty nice because obviously you want to have um, a little bit of that mixed up with the lefties in there as well. Um, but yeah, I, lo- I love me this Dodgers lineup today. Um, I'm sure, they'll be chalk and DFS, so it makes it a little tough. Um, but I will be heading over to another game with with a garbage can on the on the mound. And Cal Quantra used to be my boy. I used to love backing him in Cleveland out there. Unfortunately, today he's heading into Philly um, into a tough spot. Um, let's take a look at Quantrill here so far this year. Um, obviously, numbers are not great. 7.2 ERA, almost a two uh, whip, um, giving up at least three runs in every single game. He did throw well against Arizona. I will give him that. Uh, Got 10 ground balls, though, and I don't expect a ton of ground balls. He's not really a ground ball guy. This year, he's only got a 40% ground ball rate. I don't expect um, those big type of numbers, but 9.4% barrel rate, highest of his career. Obviously not good. You look at his sinker is getting hit. Um, <laughs> he's got an expected batting average of 360 with an expected slugging of almost 700, an actual slugging of 900. This is a dude who's just not missing bats. You can't. Do that against this Phillies lineup. He's got a 14% K rate, um, which is actually better than last year. He had a 13% K rate last year. Um, he's got, like I said, a 7.2 ERA. But the thing that's killing me is is a seven and a half percent walk rate. When you're not a guy who blows up bats, you can't be putting three guys on base. And this Phillies team is dangerous, man. It's a dangerous lineup. A lot of strikeouts in this lineup, but you don't have the guy who can do it. So Looking at Cal Quantrill, even going into last year, he had a 5-3 FIP against, or XFIP against lefties, a 5-5-3 XFIP against righties. This year he's getting blown up from both sides of the plate, but especially righties who this year have just been absolutely nuking him. He has an 8-6 FIP against right-handed bats. Um, well, yeah, let's sign up Nick Castiano, Trey Turner, Alec Bohm. Like, just sign me up for that and then – if you're not going to miss bats against Harper and Schwarber, what are you going to do? Like, that's how you get them out is their high K rate guys. Um, I love this spot. Even if Cal Quantra has, has a, has a quality start, six innings, three earned. Let's go to this bullpen. The, the worst bullpen in the MLB, right They They rank worse in terms of whip by over a 10th of a um, walk or hit. It is really scary to do that, right? You have a 1.83 whip. You have a 5.97 ERA as a team. Their team has one save this year. This bullpen has one save. This They can't hold leads. I had a bet on the Rays when they played in um, Colorado. They were up four runs and blew it within two innings, and it wasn't even like anything really happened, right? So um, I really like this Phillies lineup today. Um, they're in that little earlier spot. They got nice weather out there as well. It's just if you can't miss bats against this Phillies lineup, I'm really concerned for you. Um, and uh, I do see the, the total is coming down a little bit here. Maybe it's just because um, people are fading um, this Rocky team against Nola a little bit. But I think at plus money here, this is a tough spot for me to get away from. I love the Phillies today, um, especially all these right-handed bats. Yeah, it feels good to be fading Cal again. You know, that's like a, almost a tradition around here. But I like what you said, too. I did see some people in the first five, you know, so I was curious. But the bullpen stuff is definitely a good look, obviously. You want to take advantage of that as much as possible, especially once again, like you said, getting at plus money right here. It's not what I personally would expect against this matchup, right? I know the Philly bats, like you mentioned, are not hot coming in right here. But I think this is as bad as a good opportunity as you can get. Have you? I don't think I've ever seen this where a guy has. I mean, obviously, I know it's early, but he has no pitch with higher than an eighteen point two percent whiff rate. Wow, no pitch at all. So it's like, dude, I just don't under, like. Obviously, you can get lucky sometimes, right? You can have guys get hit it hard right at somebody, but um, like I said, when you're just you got the nice weather out there as well. It's not like the wind's blowing in. It's not like uh, you have to look into like a bullpen like the Twins or something like that. It's garbage to another can right after. So um, definitely a spot you want to go to. Winston Poppy in here. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm late. No, you're good, my guy. You can bring it in whenever you like. Um, what are you seeing so far on the site? Yes, these hit runs RBIs at two and a half are risky, but I can't. Yeah, I mean, it just, I mean, the thing is, is the book. No, too. That's why they're giving me at the two and a half. And uh, every even when it goes up to two and a half, it's just such a 
you, you, you need to be on the right spot there, right? So um, definitely good look. And I've been really liking these RBI props. I feel like I've been playing those a lot more than usual, and they're giving me great numbers. Um, so definitely a good spot. Um, I like I do like the righties. I really like Castellanos today. Um, I know there's not much like um, you know history between Quantrill and a lot of these dudes, um, but Castellanos I know already has a homer off him. I'm sure people are going to go to him today. Um, but if I had to pick somebody, I would want to go with Castellanos today. Sounds good. I like that look. All right, let's do our recap, Sue. I'm not sure. Do you have a long shot already or no? I, I currently don't have a long okay. shot right now. Um, I will let you take away here for our um, recap. Yeah, although, yeah, I'll probably play Task or Homer. Got to gotta do it right here. But we'll do over one and a half hits, runs, RBIs, minus 120 over on Bet MGM. And then half year spot. Yep, we got Sandoval under 16 and a half outs. That is minus 120 also over on MGM and Caesars as well. Beautiful. I'll be kicking off with a plus money spot of the Phillies team total over five and a half. Um, and also going to Michael Harris and Frankie Montas, um, five strikeouts there. So that's minus 118. Um, I do have a long shot. Um, it's going back to one of my old ways of doing it. I'm doing alt totals today um, for this game. I'm going to be going to let me pull it up again because these numbers are actually kind of moving, which is interesting. I was not expecting um, alternate line numbers to move, um, but I'm going to be going to the Cincy game. First five under two and a half runs, which obviously is very, very nice price because two and a half for a first five is pretty wild. And then I'm also going to go to this Phillies game um, and I'm going to go to the Phillies alternate over um, and that's going to be at. 10 and a half. I'm going to play it at 10 and a half. And that's going to be um, a really nice price of 696. Almost seven to one on those odds. Let me check. Okay. Now it's 656. Joyous of doing this live, of seeing these numbers move. But I really like this, the Cincy game under. I, I really think this George Kirby. Um, slander is is going to end today. Um, his underlying numbers are fantastic. His velo is fine. Um, I, un I understand it's early in the season, but it's just like I bet on Gausman. I'm going to bet on good pitchers that have shown me track records to continue to do it. Um, and also like Montas. I already talked about him. I like the spot for him against this um, Seattle lineup in Seattle. The number one pitcher's park it is official. It is the number one pitcher's park in the MLB. Um, two guys that don't get hit very hard uh, very often. I Like I said, George Kirby – popping back. I'm expecting a big day from him. And then going to this Philly size, I just don't get it, dude. Either one of these sides gets up big. The the, the the middle of those bullpens on both of them suck. They suck. So I'm like, all I need, even so say Colorado gets, gets up. That's fine. Because the middle of that Philly's bullpen in the bad arms there are, 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 are going to compete with the Rockies arms for being God awful. So I think either team gets up Early in these first couple innings, I'm assuming, I'm hoping it's the Phillies that do so. Um, I think this game could get out of hand either way. So, um, especially here with, um, I could see both teams scoring five, right? I see. I talked about Nola giving up some some power already this year, um, and especially the lefties. Um, you, you got a pretty nice lefty middle lineup here with McMahon there as well. Um, you obviously have uh, McMahon, who's obviously been doing really well, but Nolan Jones, looking good as well to start the year. Um, you got speed around too. Um, so I, th I think we could definitely see some runs there. So the first, the, the Cincy game is first five and the Phillies is the full game. So I think that's a great price. Um, and, and expected that Phillies number to be at nine and a half, like for a game, but uh, I guess they, they respect Quantrill more than me, I guess. Yeah, no, I like the combination though, obviously, because we mentioned it like, like when a game goes off the rails, it goes off the rails. You know what I mean? Like when you look at like median averages on how much a team scores, that doesn't always take into account how like unpredictable these games are. And like you mentioned, when you can get to those bad middle relief guys, right? That's when things can really blow up. And that's where you can really take advantage of those alternate overs. And obviously you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but definitely like that look right here. Definitely tailing you on the, on the long shot. And, and this, this is something else. Just, this is just my tangent, I guess, of the day is, this is why it's really tough, at least for me, to bet like alternate unders in games. Like I don't want to do that ever. Like I never want to bet like alternate unders like in buying them up, you know, mm -hmm. and making them like minus four hundred. You know what I mean? 
Like, if I'm going to buy it, I want to buy it down, if anything. Like, I'm betting for the overs here because it's really tough, especially, like, full game. If you get any team up by more than two or three runs, you're throwing in cans, man. You're throwing in cans out there because you got to save these arms. And, I mean, you could take the alternate team total if you think the Rockies are going to are gonna get that lead early. Take it all the way to the top, man. Because we see a lot of these games where it's just like, holy shit, how is that an eight total? And it's like 14 runs. Right, and we I had a lot of success last year rolling with these as my long shots because baseball is super unpredictable. Baseball has a lot of different spots here that that can just get you off the rails real quick, right? Couple errors, you know, couple walks, and you're just like you're in business, man. And you see some of those totals just shoot through the roof. Um, but that's the reason why I'm taking that first five under and not the full game under because I don't trust it even at seven, right? I think I love both arms. But I'm not messing around with pens, man. I'm not doing that, especially if it's like 2 nothing, right? We could see some garbage right away, and you could definitely see those runs blow up. But you've seen a lot more of that, this, like, teams – I'm not saying throwing in the towel. I'm not saying that. But but not going to give their high-end arms spots even when it's a two-run game. You, their offense obviously would come back, and then you do see them. But that's what I'm saying. Some of these teams can just run away with it and hide, you know, so – Definitely spots where I, I want to be betting the overs in those spots for the ultimate unders. And if I'm going to take it like a full get or a under, I want to take it in that first five. Yeah, no, I like this look a lot right here. I'm definitely, I'm definitely riding it with you. And too, I want to say I, I did just, I think I like a little Juan Soto home run as well. While we were talking, I think, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna lock that in. I'm looking for the best price right now. But Bassett, not off to a good start. We already know that Soto can handle those off-speed pitches and take them 400 feet better than most. I see 400 is the best right now for a Soto homer against Bassett. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride with that right there. I'm going to ride with that. All three homers are against lefties. or He's allowed all three homers to lefties so far. I can already see it in my head. He's taken, he's taken an off-speed deep right here. So I locked in one Soto to hit a bomb. Dude, I, dude you know I love Chris Bassett, bro. You know I love him. I, I, I don't, dude. This, dude this, this is the thing: is if it was in Yankee Stadium, I would bet this immediately. I would mm-hmm. bet it immediately. Chris Bassett's home road is so wild, bro. Like this dude can't do anything on the road. That's why he got smoked in those first two games. But like, I know it was against Seattle. I had him in DFS. Had a really nice night. Really over the field on Bassett. I'm kind of on that Bassett train. I'm not saying so. Can't hit a homer in that spot, mm-hmm. but. Bro, the dude is kind of nice at home. I don't get it, bro. I don't get it. I don't understand how you can be that different. 7-3 versus 1-3 so far this year. Last year was a 4.5 to a 2-8 sub-200 average against. Obviously, there's enough power in this lineup to do suit some damage, especially lefties, I think, had like 20-plus homers on them last year. So, I guess you're looking for yeah. that. I kind of want to play Bassett uh, in DFS, and I kind of want to play Bassett like earned runs under. I, re- I really like this spot when he's at home, man. It's just like it's just like when I was playing Cal two years ago. Remember when we would be on the first year of MLB, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just like the dude just finds a way to get shit done at home. It's wild, man. Yeah, I would just – I would almost rather take – if you like Bassett, I'd almost rather go like outs than like earned runs, right? Because like you said, a Soto and Judge one two that can fuck you even if he's perfect throughout the whole time, you know? So – Giancarlo, obviously all these guys can give you that little one one tap. But I, I see what you mean. He's obviously has a, a larger range of outcomes than most. He really can bounce back from, you know, kind of a total mess to like a very good starter as well. That's why we're sticking with one lefty in this lineup. I don't want to trust the whole Yankees. I want to trust my guy Juan Soto. Yeah, I mean, I, if anything, I'd probably take walk. I'd probably take a one Soto walk in this one. That's that's all. But what's that like minus two hundred? I don't have, I have no friend. idea. I have no idea. Yeah. I would too. You know, I'm with you. Obviously, I yeah, take one. Yeah. Well, I won't throw to him. Why would I throw to him? Because I can get righties out, and that's pretty much the rest of your lineup. You know what I mean? That's what yeah. I. That's. I'm always thinking like that, though. I guess I'm a pitching guy, so it's like, fuck. I would. Why would I want to throw to this fucker? You know, like that. Yeah. That's just me, though. That's just. That's just the way I think about it. Well, I see. I see minus one seventy five for a walk right now. So that's not, probably, dude, that is. Not, I that is. I'll throw in Dodgers money line and you got a reasonable play, you know, not just oh, a place shit. holder, but you know. I might take that shit right now, bro. Honestly, like I might too as a hedge to my home run. <laughs> I don't want to see him get walked three times, you know. I, I might have to load that up. Yeah, dude. It, it, dude, I don't know if I've seen numbers like this, and and I bet on I bet on passes a lot, and so it's just like crazy to see these numbers just continue to happen. 
you know, like wild, man. This dude is just so like hit or miss and it's always at home where he's good. I mean, this is three years worth of sample size where he hasn't given over a two, two thirty batting average, bro. It's wild. But, uh, all right. So you got anything else for the people here before we head off? I don't. I think it's a good Monday show. You know, make sure to follow over on Twitter. Like I said, I'm looking at Manessis under hits, runs, RBIs. and looking at Luis Garcia to strike out. I got a couple couple more prop looks that will find their way to Twitter. So if you want, you know, the most updated. Also, play-in tournament is literally tomorrow. I thought I had like two or three days, but it's tomorrow. So no break for me. We're staying right in an NBA. Um, so I'll have some stuff for that as well. So definitely a lot to look forward to. Um, obviously back Wednesday, Friday, have a guest on Friday. Should be a good show. Yes, sir. Obviously, I, I might be betting on NBA in the playing game. Not on this, but not on the show. But uh, remember, Wednesday usually gets a little earlier spot just with the early MLB slate. Um, but, yeah, dude, I just you just bet the PRAs. The guys are going to play 48 minutes. You know, they're gonna, not even going to put in the bench anymore. They're just like, fuck it, let's go. We got to win or else we're out, you know. So I definitely um, can see a lot more. You're not going to see those scrubs anymore. You're not going to see these. Yeah. You're not going to see yeah. Peyton Pritchard playing 42 minutes, bro. Fuck. Well, did you, did you see my card yesterday, dude? I mean, they're probably guys you've never heard of. Like, I played – I had 17 props, and half of them were on, like, legit random guys. Like, that. it's so funny to go from, like – made up names yesterday to like, okay, stars are playing 40 minutes now. It's, it's, you're right. All those scrubs. It's time to, to wave goodbye to the role players. Yep. It's big boy time, baby. It's big boy <laughs> time. It's time to show out. So, all right, Stu, I will catch you Wednesday. We'll be back and ready to roll again. Be ready. We usually tweet out pretty early when we're going to do it. Um, I think the last couple of times it's been nine o'clock my time. Um, but just looking at the slate on Wednesday already, uh, kind of looking like that again this week. Uh, we have an 11 a.m. game out there. We got probably 75% of the slate uh, up and through 310. There's yeah. three late games. So okay. um, we'll be early then. We'll, we'll be, be we'll be early, ready to go. I think we'll do nine. Uh, yeah. It's kind of nice when you actually, like, look forward. I actually looked a couple of days forward. But it's just like, I'm usually just like one day, one day, one day. I'm not even going to check. So it's nice to, to look and be able to say, all right, we'll do it. So be ready. We'll do it uh, next show at 9 my time as usual. I'm assuming we're good with that, Stu, because we did it the last couple weeks. Yep. Uh, but hopefully – I know we've seen a lot of you guys in here early uh, when we do that early show. So we'll be back and ready to go. So thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back on Wednesday early with you guys. So best of luck tonight, and let's cash some tickets.